Hello everyone, it's your friend Tanishka and welcome or welcome back to my channel. I know I've been gone for the past six months, but I've decided that now is the perfect time to come back for it is the 7th of February 2023, which means it is World Periodic Table Day. This year, we are going to be talking about electron orbitals on the periodic table. So without further ado, let's get started. Let's get to know what electron orbitals are. In physics and in chemistry, the orbital is a mathematical expression that describes the properties of two electrons in the vicinity of the atomic nuclei. Sounds interesting, right? Now, let's give some credit to the genius behind this idea. Niels Bohr who was a Danish scientist who discovered the electron orbitals. He won a Nobel Prize for it and has an element named after him, element 107, which is called borium. Let's jump into the properties of the elements in each orbital. First, we have the S orbital, or S block. These elements are mostly metals, except hydrogen and helium, which are gases. They are all very reactive metals, so they need to be stored under oil in laboratories and they lose their outermost electrons to form cations or a positively charged ion. Next, we have the p orbital or the p block. These elements consist of the semi-metals, non-metals, halogens, and noble gases. Most of the elements in this category form covalent compounds with other elements, and they lose their electrons easily. Next, we have the d orbital or the d block. These elements are metallic in nature, which means they're metals, and they're very malleable, which means that they can be pressed into sheets, and ductile, which means they can be shaped into a wire. The elements in this group conduct heat and electricity very well, which is why they're used in many electronic appliances. Many metals that you may be familiar with, such as iron, copper, gold, silver, mercury, etc., can be found in this category of elements. And last but not least, we have the F orbital. The F orbital consists of the lanthanide and the actinide elements, which are also known as the rare earth elements. Most of the elements in this category are very radioactive and are produced synthetically in a lab, which means that they're not found in nature. That being said, thanks for watching today's video and have an elementally fabulous day ahead. Don't forget to like and subscribe to this channel and leave whatever questions you have in the comment section of the video or email me on the email in the description box. Thank you once ahead and have a great day ahead.